Donald Trump joins us now on the phone. Mr. Trump, good morning. Good morning. Uh, let, let me just start off where Peter just ended up. I'm sure you've heard Marco Rubio's latest shot at you. It follows shots you've taken at him. I would say it's fair to say both childish, who has big hands, who has small hands, who has big ears, who has small ears, who sweats, who's a loser, who chokes. Can you blame people sitting across the country and around the world for saying, wait a minute, these guys are running for the most important and powerful job in the world? Well, I never started this bad. I'm way ahead in the polls. Well, I'm not sure Rubio, people would agree with that. Sure, but I'm way ahead in the polls. And Rubio came out and started doing, because he's desperate, he's, he's 20 points behind in Florida. He's a no-show in Florida. The people of Florida, they, would, they wouldn't elect him dog catcher. And frankly, but, he's, he got desperate, and all of a sudden he started doing personal attacks. So when somebody does a personal attack, you hit him back. But and at I hit this back stage of hard. the race, Mr. Trump, don't the voters deserve to hear answers to their questions as yes, opposed to childish I insults? I, I agree. But when you have one of the people running that gets it's personal. I always believe in answering back, and I answered back, uh, and I would continue to answer back. But you know, it hasn't helped him in the polls because his polls have actually gone down since he's doing it. But he did it because he's desperate. He's losing Florida. He's losing all over the place. I don't really blame him for doing it because the other, his other approach was not working. So I don't blame mm -hmm. him. Yep. But it is politics, Matt. I mean, it's something that happens. I mean, he was desperate. He's down in the polls. He's a nervous wreck. I watch him. I watched how he's melt. I, I watched his. Mr. Trump. Down against Chris yeah. Christie, let, and, let's, and the let's, guy he wanted to go a different approach. Okay, I think we're, I think we've cleared that up. Let's talk about another issue that has bubbled up, and this is your comments on a CNN program where you were asked about David Duke, former Grand Wizard of the KKK. You said three times in this interview, "I don't know who D David Duke is," and you refused to disavow or distance yourself from him. Now, a lot of people are scratching their heads over that because number one, you disavowed David Duke two days prior. Why are you pretending that you are acting as though you don't know who this person is? Why not disavow David Duke, disavow the KKK? What's going on? Well, first of all, he talked about David Group and other groups. He talked about other yeah, but groups. But you said okay? three times, I, I don't me. know who David Duke excuse is. Me. No, no. Well, I know who he is, but I never met David Duke. So you, when you talk about it, I never met David Duke. But, but in 2000, you refused to run on the Reform Party platform David because Duke. David Duke was a member David of it. I David Duke a day before at a major press conference, and I'm saying to myself, how many times do I have to continue to disavow people? And the question was asked about David, group, David Duke and various groups. And I don't know who the groups are. I said, would you do me a favor and tell me the groups? He was unable to tell me He that. says, I'm just it, talking about meantime, David Duke it, and the Ku Klux Klan here. And you said, honestly, I well, don't know let, David let Duke. Okay, so let me tell you. I'm sitting in a house in Florida with a very bad earpiece that they gave me. And you could hardly hear what he was saying. But what I heard was various groups. And I don't mind disavowing anybody. And I disavowed David Duke. And I disavowed him the day before at a major news conference which is surprising because he was at the major news conference, CNN was at the major news conference, and they heard me very easily disavow David Duke. Now I go and I sit down again, I have a lousy earpiece that is provided by them, and frankly, he talked about groups. He also talked about groups. And I have no problem with disavowing groups, but I'd at least like to know who they, who they are. It would be very right. fair to disavow a group, Matt, if the group shouldn't be disavowed. I have to know who the groups are. But I disavowed David Duke. Now, if you look on Facebook, right after that, I also disavowed David Duke. When we looked at it and looked at the question, I disavowed David Duke. So I've disavowed David Duke all weekend long on Facebook, on Twitter, and really? obviously it's never enough. Real, real it's quickly, ridiculous. it was a big piece in the New York Times yesterday, Mr. Trump, about the Republican establishment's efforts over the past couple of months to derail your campaign. Governors got together and met and talked about writing a letter to the American people disavowing your brand and your candidacy. In your opinion, right now on the eve of Super Tuesday, has the Republican establishment lost its opportunity to stop you? Well, I think I'm doing very well. A Reuters poll came out where I'm at 44 and 45, and, and other people are at 11. 
Uh, so that's a pretty big lead, to put it mildly. That's a national poll. So I'm doing very, very well. I'm doing well in all of the states. I'd love to win Texas. That's the only one where I'm a little bit down to a sitting senator who's done a terrible job, hasn't done a damn thing for the people of Texas. So I think I have a chance of winning Texas. Uh, I think I'll win Florida in two weeks because Rubio's right. a no-show. He's a, he has done a terrible job for Florida. He's defrauded Florida. He never shows up for votes. So I think I'm going to win Florida. You said yesterday and, you, know, you feel I mean, I'm like... Doing, I'm doing very well. Yeah. You said yesterday you feel like in a sense that if the Republican establishment gets together and has some organized way to try to defeat you that they're violating their pledge to you and if that's the case what's 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 your next step what would you do about that well, if they violate the pledge, which possibly they've already done, as you understand, if they violate the pledge, I would do something that would make them very unhappy. I have millions and millions of followers. We had uh, the endorsement yesterday of, of Jeff Sessions, Senator Jeff Sessions, one of the most respected people in the Senate. And we attended a, a an event that was so incredible in Alabama with 35,000 people. I don't know if you covered it. Everybody covered it, but I don't know if you talk about the number of people. We have 35,000 people in a foot. In a big football stadium right and he said he has never seen anything like that and he's been in politics for 30 years he has never seen an event like that with that people and that kind of love Don we have tremendous we have tremendous support and I think, frankly, the Republican Party should get behind me because we're opening up the Republican Party. When I won in South Carolina, we got far more votes than the Democrats got. Right. You know, if you look at our votes versus the Democrats, we got far more votes. And let's, we get far more votes than we got four years ago. We're opening up the party. Democrats are coming in. I call them the Reagan choose, Democrats. Let's choose uh, that. Independents are coming in. It's a far bigger party. I've done a very great service for the Republican Party. Let's choose that as a, as a good place to stop, Mr. Trump. Hopefully we'll get to talk to you after Super Tuesday. Thanks for your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.